Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we are back in the square foot vegetable garden and we're going to try and bring a semblance of order back to this crazy post-summer rabble. Let's get started. It's the 12th of September already. I do not know where the year is going. <laughs> I've noticed that many things in the garden are actually running about two weeks earlier than I would expect them to be. The first thing I spotted was the hawthorn tree came into full flower definitely, easily two weeks earlier than it ought to have done. It's called a May tree. <laughs> it's supposed to be flowering in May. This one was flowering in mid-April. And I've noticed as we've gone on through the season that other things are also running early. Pumpkins and squashes are ripening that really lovely hard rind already that's going to make them store beautifully. Tomatoes that we know I struggled with really early on in the season have suddenly sort of started pelting out fruit. And now we're at the point where there's still tons of flour the light levels are going to start dropping significantly. The day length is shortening all the time and we're going to get less and less opportunity for those fruits to ripen. You can hopefully see that quite a lot has changed behind me in the contents of the square foot beds. So the onions came out such as they were, they were rubbish. Dwarf French beans have been pulled up and replaced with leeks. We've got that, that rotation of crops now happening in each square in the bed. Let's go and take a closer look at what's going on. The pumpkin squashes and particularly the courgettes are now really starting to succumb to powdery mildew. It's not surprising. It's normally due to actually a lack of water rather than too much water and it will start to weaken the plant to the point where it won't be able to fruit anymore but these are an annual crop we aren't expecting them to carry on year to year they should go hard and fast and uh, burn up pretty quickly so I mean this is completely to be expected but I am getting some beautiful squash that formed early on in the season and they are really ripening up nicely keeping an eye on them, making sure there's no signs of damage or rot, make sure there's no slugs on them, eating through the rind because that will impede their storing capacity. You will also notice that the vine that this one is on has almost been denuded entirely of leaf and that's fine. This doesn't really actually need the leaves anymore. I'll be looking to actually remove this from the plant fairly soon. So all leaves will be doing is actually shading out the ripening process and I want this to be as ripe as possible before I remove it. I will also take a nice chunk of stem with it when I do harvest it. <laughs> this is courgette sunstripe. So far I have had a no full grown courgettes from it. It's got a few babies happening but my chances are so slim now. These carrots feel like they've been in the bed for about three centuries. Square foot gardening is all about packing in the produce and getting as many plants as you can into the ground. But there does come a point where they start to shade each other out and I think these struggled because the courgettes and squashes around them were putting on so much lush growth and indeed the beetroot just had lovely really lush leaves on them and they prevented the carrots from getting going that we are uh, still got some really weak ones but there's quite a nice chunky one happening there foliage looks happy so I'll leave it be for now You'll see as we go around that I have put all my leeks out. They were in a long trough in a sort of holding pattern for ages. And then suddenly as squares started to become available, 
I've managed to put them out properly. They took a little blip but they seem to be sort of getting themselves going again now. This is Zermatt. Everything in this bed is Zermatt. Here we have an incredibly sad little kale plant. It got demolished by cabbage white butterfly caterpillar. Um, we will talk a little bit more about that as we go round. At the back you can still see there's beetroot plants in the ground and now we've got through that heat of summer they should start bulking again. As we come along the bed you can see there's more leeks and then these squares here are ruby chard which I had started off in the greenhouse and kept them there all summer long because I just didn't have space out here but they're out now. Again they took a little bit of a transplant blip but because it was so much cooler when I did plant them out they have recovered quite quickly. This squash is autumn crown and although this side is doing lots of flower there's no actual fruit here. I'm going to cut it off. This is never going to make a squash. Never ever. It's too late. But this plant has got another long vine coming off it, going in that direction towards the chickens. So hopefully that will have something on it. Don't be deceived by that fruit that is not attached to that vine. This fairly lush growth is coming from courgette zucchini, which is all the way over there. I've had one fruit off this plant, <laughs> but as it's still putting out really nice new growth and some embryonic fruit, uh, there's a chance we might get some more from it. Well, I'll give it a, a chance. Here I've got a piece of growth from one of the asparagus plants. It's got broken and has gone brown so I, I'm actually going to cut that back. All the top growth should start dying back soon anyway but it is blocking light for other plants so it does no harm to take it out. It also pays to keep removing dead, dying and disease ridden leaves and stems from plants particularly pumpkins and squashes because they're so enormous and they're blocking out light they provide an incredible habitat for soil-borne pests and diseases and slugs and snails and things and you know, just get rid of them. Even just doing that really helps you see what space you've got available. As we know Crown Prince has put on this mad stem coming out of the square foot bed. Scrumbling along the ground here Think of secretaires. And hiding down here is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful squash. Look how big it is. I'm going to just remove the last of those leaves. But as you'll know, if you've been watching any of my other square foot gardening videos through the season, that's not the end of the story. The stem continues up here. It runs along the front of the apple tree bed and up the front of the chicken run. I've done nothing to that. It has done that all on its own. And wow, those vines have clung on so tight. This, wow. This is better than any tying in I've ever done anywhere. Fantastic. So by taking the leaves off, we can now expose the skin to the sunshine, let it ripen properly. And it's going to be another amazing fruit. Yes, go Crown Prince. While we're here between the square foot bed and the chickens, we can have a look at the Borlotti beans. 
they've done so well, they've produced so many beans, but everything has its season. I could go ahead and save some of these as shelling beans, but you know what? These plants have done me no disservice at all. I've had so many beans off these plants. I think they've done their bit. Little beans like that are still perfectly edible, nice and narrow, no, no swelling up of the beans, so I can still use these as fresh beans. <laughs> There's some tiny baby ones. So just check through as you're taking the foliage off that you're not throwing beans away. I mean, it's tiny but it's edible. This one is probably a bit too bulbous and won't be very tasty to eat so I will get rid of that one but if you were going to be having these as shelling beans you would just leave this on the plant and let it go and by clearing the beans back I'm now starting to reveal this vine which is I'm not quite sure probably autumn crown But anyway, that one needs some maintenance as well. This one was getting some damage to its rind, so I decided to lift it up onto the back of this sieve just to try and keep it off damp, mucky surfaces, try and help it ripen properly. Rotating the fruit can help them to ripen evenly as well, so just every week or so, just turning it onto a different face. This mottled browning on the rind won't affect the flesh at all. So long as the skin remains intact, that will be absolutely beautiful. The bikers are clearly making the best of the nice weather today because, oh my goodness, there are so many motorbike noises. Uh, edit, edit, edit. <laughs> and you know, this sort of pruning at this time of year doesn't make me sad at all. These plants have done fantastically. It's when you have to chop down or pull out something that's failed. That's the really sad bit of gardening. But I have no problem with the performance that these plants have put on. And hopefully you can see that I have also got another two squashes happening on this vine here. And dare I mention the crazy beast that is heading its way up and along the top of the square foot bed netting. It's flowering. It may have fruit. The leaves on grape cardinal are starting to turn colour, but so too are the fruit. That's always an exciting time. Not just for us, but also for the local bird life who like to eat them all before we get a chance to. <laughs> now the beans are partly cut down, we can start to see through to the chicken run again. And you can also see how that will allow extra light to fall on these three squashes. One, two, three. These beautiful lettuce are a variety called Salanova. So we have a crisp sort of frisé variety and then also a butter head. I actually pulled a whole head out the other day because they were starting to get a bit packed in. These are the best lettuce I have ever grown. They taste beautiful. They've gone through the heat of the summer and out the other side. They stayed fairly small. I, I mean, they've seen sort of full massive butterhead lettuces from um, you can't eat the grass I think it's partly because of how I'm growing them that they've stayed a little bit more contained but nonetheless masses of leaves masses of flavour I will put a link to where I got my Salanova lettuce seeds from they are expensive they are yeah. hands up 
it's a lot cheaper to just go to the supermarket and buy a lettuce but these are the best lettuces I have ever grown and I'm super duper happy about that. Also recommended by You Can't Eat The Grass are these little babies down here. This is Pak Choi Joy Choi <laughs> and uh, they got entirely eaten by flea beetle. Thankfully what the flea beetle left alone was the centre growing point so it means that now their cycle has finished the plants are going to be able to recover and all right we might get some slightly smaller pak choy but they will still be pak choy they should still taste delicious and looking forward to that and in fact yeah the whole row is starting to bounce back so that's fantastic let's now have a look at the other bed so we've got leeks growing in the end and along the back we have parsnips. Now next year I've got a plan to actually utilise this whole back strip for rhubarb. Um, where it is currently it's not really getting enough of anything. It makes our rhubarb picking season incredibly short which is a real shame. This bit doesn't get as much light, in fact it probably gets the least light of any of the garden and it would make more sense to put something there that can tolerate that low light level. The leeks on this side are Neptune and they are taking a little bit longer to bounce back from being transplanted than the ones in the other side. The kale plants are doing really nicely. These are the ones that went in really early in the season and I was worried about them because I thought they were going to get eaten by cabbage white but they pulled through and they are well, ready to pick now. And here are my seven sweet corn plants, which are doing okay. We've had some beautiful corns from them. Yes, they've had a bit of aphid trouble on the outside, but the tassels have gone brown, which means that pollination has happened and up. Ooh, the cobs are ripe. Wow. Look at that. That is a proper corn on the cob. That is that's pretty awesome. That's one of the best ones I've ever grown. There's no germination here and the sweet corns themselves are quite small up this stripe. Now I suspect that is where it was up against the plant itself so it has um, not been able to get pollinated as the pollen has fallen. But hey, that's awesome. There's also a clump of beetroot in here. Now they've been in there quite some time. Um, they sort of stopped growing during the summer, so I'm hoping that they're going to start again now that the temperatures have cooled down a little bit. Tomatoes have been a bit hit or miss this year. Um, <laughs> this is my tumbling tomatoes. They're definitely suffering with something. I don't think it's blight because it hasn't really mush them down to nothing but the fruits are now starting to get affected by it so it's probably time to call this one a day here is tomato sportive or whatever it was called a silly grafted one that I was sent by Van Muren not going to give it an awful lot of time has fruit to come, whether they do anything is another matter, a bunch up there as well. Well and truly annoyed with them. However, Miss Shirley, the classic F1 variety, has been fabulous. We've had some fantastic fruit from her, really decent size, lovely taste lovely texture 
a really reliable variety. Now here I've got some more brassica plants that were in the greenhouse and they were busy being eaten not only by cabbage white butterfly caterpillars but also flea beetle. Oh my goodness, the flea beetle were just relentless. All the plants are absolutely smothered. I got to the point where I just had to leave them as such sort of sacrificial plants. I couldn't do anything about it. But much like the plants in the square foot bed, some of them have still got their growing point, which means that they should be able to grow through all this damage, as diabolical as it is. The, the cabbage white butterfly have really finished these babies off. But that little bit of movement at the growing point means that we still have a plant that could potentially give us a crop. And I've also got some kale as well. This is Nera di Toscana. That might be a bit more midnight sun. Uh, I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant them anyway and just see what I get. Anything is better than nothing. Here's the planter I was using for some of the Borlotti beans. In fact, you can still see some of the stems in here. I'm just adding a mulch of manure on top. Remember to leave room to water without it spilling over the top. Take off any damaged leaves, check for caterpillars and new eggs, then plant. I might as well try rather than put them straight on the compost heap. Now I'm just going to take these dodgy looking savoy cabbage and try and find appropriate homes for them in the square foot beds somewhere. They'll be somewhere. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, to share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.